Creativity is an addiction. You have to learn to love it, listen to it, and grow with it. It will keep you awake every night. It will. You know, a lot of people are taking melatonin. Oh, I got the anxiety. Oh, well, you know what? I'll bet you it's the creative monster trying to get a voice heard on this planet that we're currently living on. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity, totally uncut because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. Stepping into the studio to share a few thoughts. But you rarely don't get the opportunity to, to hear or to see where those thoughts arrive from. And I think that I, I wish a lot more writers did do that. They, they share the experience because so many people elect that I, I'm not going to write because I, I just don't have the time or I don't have the energy or the dedication, loyalty, determination to put words on a page. And yet we will talk openly on social media, but then forget it just as fast as it came from our fingertips. And so when, when you put it in paper form, you can go back, and, and, and the strangest thing about it is I was, I was just talking with a Skylin Brooks uh, who writes music. He's in this new movie called Outsiders, and, and we, we got on the subject of writing and about how the impact of writing is in the moment, and, but the thing is, though, is that it, it has a new interpretation on a different day, but it still carries the energy with it, and, and that's what's fun about being a writer. It's not the pressure of, oh, my God. It's, it's more like, oh, my God. It, it's like something's moving through you, and it, and it feels pretty incredible to release it. Hey, it's Arrow. This is The Choice. This is what I was writing while the sun was waking up on a brilliant new day. Today we are reading from March 9th, 2022. I sit here waiting, waiting for a dream. It used to be you and me till you kept stealing. Those are lyrics from a song that I wrote in 1986, and then we recorded it. Then I re-recorded the song in 2013 with a completely different vibe. I think if we were to remix it even today in 2022, it would carry a third message. Let me say it again. I sit here waiting, waiting for a dream. It used to be you and me till you kept stealing. Have you been in a position like that where you have this dream that you've been wanting? You've been patiently waiting for that dream to take place, but something keeps stealing. Standing this deep in life's everyday chapters, you can't help but think of not just the dreams that you didn't capture, but those you still have, the energy of what you are reaching for. I mean, because life isn't over. The world is pretty messed up, though. But that's not a reason to close down shop. In 1986, the song represented the emotions of a 24-year-old who was dealing with abortion. I'll read it again. I sit here waiting, waiting for a dream. It used to be you and me till you kept stealing. That's what he was writing when he was 24 years old. At the age of 41, when he stepped back into that studio, he was speaking of his career, not the abortion. You see how words on a page can have a new interpretation. I sit here waiting, waiting for a dream. It used to be you and me till you kept stealing. His career kept stealing. And that's why the song was re-recorded. And I'm amazed at how just leaving a thought behind creates that interpretation on a different day. Today, the song would represent the same man accusing himself of no longer having the fire to realize the original dream. I'll be 60 in June. I sit here waiting, waiting for a dream. It used to be you and me till you kept stealing, stealing from myself. I challenge you to put your words on a page and allow life to happen and see how those words on a page have a new interpretation that you can grow from the seeds that you leave behind. I'm Errol, and that's what I was writing while the sun was waking up on a brilliant new day.